Well, good morning. Um, we're going to give you a little update on some of the rehab that we've got going right now. The first one that's interesting is, is our, our uh, red-tailed hawk that we've got here. This is the hawk that had all of its tail feathers ripped out, or all the two. So let's, uh, let's get him caught and give him a quick check out and see how he's coming along. So give me just a minute and I'll, and I'll grab him. Come on out, let's see how we're coming. Got a lot of broken wing feathers. Still does. Oh yeah, he's it's, on the right wing. While, but we're just doing a quick check here, and see how he's coming along. There we go. Hey, babe. Okay. Now, these because they're broken, right here, these are going to take a little bit longer to come through, because because they'll have to drop them. The tail, which was. Um, let me get you turned up right. Yeah, you've already had a big breakfast today. That's good. The tail, because the uh, tail feathers are ripped out, they're just growing. And like I said, there were only two tail feathers left. And right now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tail feathers in currently coming through. Nine. Tail feathers so coming through. In progress of growing. That's good. So the, the feather, the feathers, are, tail feathers are coming along. So he'll have a complete tail here in the not too distant future. But let me kind of show you something that's interesting about this. Okay, what I want you to look at here, guys, we can get you nice and close. You can see the feathers. There's a. This is the new feather growing in, and you see there's a protein shaft right here, and the protein shaft is full of blood. And so the feathers grow out of that protein shaft, and then the protein just shaft just peels off, like I'm doing right there, and exposes the, the freshly grown feather. And so all birds, not just birds of prey, but all birds, their feathers grow out of a protein shaft. You can see the one right here, that's the short, shorter feather, this protein shaft. It's just kind of like a straw, and it's full of blood. Now, if they break that, like here, if they break this shaft, what'll happen is it'll bleed. And sometimes it'll bleed really, really bad. And so when they're growing new feathers, we kind of have to protect them as best we possibly can so that these don't break, uh, so they don't, don't end up bleeding a, a lot. And so that is what we call a blood feather. And these are just feathers that haven't become fully mature and, they're, and this is full of blood and that's how the feather grows. And then once the feather is completely grown, it's okay, sweetie. Come on, I know. Once the feather is completely grown, like like this one, you can see on this this particular tail feather right here, that protein shaft completely disappears. It completely peels off, and it goes in into the um, the bird's quick, just like a fingernail. It goes into the skin, and so this is a fully grown feather, and all the rest of these are new ones growing. So the fully grown feathers one that wasn't pulled out. Yeah, this one was not pulled out. They had two that they didn't pull out. All of the rest of them were yanked out. He, she, or he is supposed to have 12 tail feathers. And so th this is, is really, really great news because this little guy right here is otherwise 100% healthy and he's going to go back to the wild. Yes, you are. He's going to go back to the wild. Now, the good, the good news is that this is um, about... Um, He's about a two-year-old, two-and-a-half-year-old. Uh, he still has a little color in his eyes. And so this guy wasn't, was not a breeder. You can see how it's lighter. You can see this eye a little bit better. It's lighter up, up on the top, a little darker underneath. Okay, so it, the eye will become come solid when it's a full adult, even though it has a red tail. It, it, it's not quite sexually mature. And so this guy will... Uh, probably not be ready to breed this year, but will certainly be ready next year. And so we're going to get him back in the wild before before he's old enough to breed. And uh, I'm sorry someone ruined your life for, for a year, but we'll get you taken care of. And right here, this big bulge that you see right here, that's his breakfast. See, birds of prey have a crop. 
They don't have a, a stomach, they have a crop and a gizzard. And the gizzards are quite small, They're, it's right down here. Uh, and, and so they can't store food in the gizzard. And so they have a crop, which is just a, a fleshy sack uh, that they, when they swallow the food, it goes into the crop. And then as the gizzard is empty and they're ready to digest more food, they basically then re-swallow a little bit of the food and goes down into the gizzard for processing. So their digestive system is very, very different than ours. And, and so that's how they store uh, a large amount of food because they need to eat a lot whenever they get the chance because life's hard. And so that's, that's how, they, how they store food. And um, you know this, this guy gets all that he wants every day nice and fat and he'll be going back to the wild so we're really excited about our red tail he'll be back in the wild by this fall for sure okay here's our next little uh patient this is the white-bellied bald eagle that we've had in for months now for about six months and our White-bellied bald is doing very, very nicely. Hi, baby. How you doing, kiddo? And he's good, he's long-term. He's going to be even a little bit longer. Uh, he uh, again uh, in the nest. Mom and dad uh, couldn't feed uh, both chicks enough food, and the big female got all the food. He didn't. He has extremely bad feather growth. And because of his poor feather growth, uh, he can't fly, and he'll have to grow all new uh, wing and tail feathers. And so that's going to be um, probably not releasable until next fall, or maybe even longer. It's hard to say, but he's uh, pretty comfortable, and he, you know, gets to eat all he wants and just kind of relax. So this is our our long-term white-bellied bald eagle. Okay, hey everybody. Um, exciting news, we just got our shipment of food for the animals. I've got six boxes here. I've got, uh, I got the freezers emptied. I got big piles of frozen stuff down here. We'll put the, uh, the freshest stuff on the bottom and the uh, older stuff on the top so we can use the older stuff first. And uh, let's see if we get this organized. Let's see what we've got. In the boxes. Okay. Mice. All of you have been so wonderful to make uh, <coughs> donations for the food for the animals, and you purchased. Uh, gift certificates from our supplier, which is Roden Pro, and so this is over $1,200 worth of frozen food that we purchased from Roden Pro, <coughs> so that we have uh, food for all the animals. Box number two. We've got six boxes here, like I said, over $1,200 worth of food. And what's in this box? Oh, good. We've got mice and quail in this particular box. So that's terrific as well. <coughs> now, these are the quail that we get. These are. Um, this is the same kind of quail you can get at the grocery store. These are Caternus quail, but they're complete. They have the feathers, the f and they have the bones, they have everything. Because we don't feed them meat, we feed them whole animals. And so that's wonderful. So quail is this one. Okay, this is the quail. We should be wearing a coat out here. It's January. It's 
pretty quite cold. Oh good. More quail. Yeah, we ran out of the quail a week or two ago. And so we're really excited to get stocked back up with quail. Don't tell Susan I'm out here without a coat and not wearing gloves. She'd be mad at me. I know I should. But I'm a guy. We do dumb things sometimes. cold. These pigeons are donated to us by a, a local fancy pigeon breeder and she the pigeons that aren't good enough, they come to us and they're food for the birds just like the rats and mice are. Six boxes. Food, I gotta repack those mice. Okay. Frozen rats. Now these we had at the last order. <clears throat> so we're fairly well stocked up on frozen rats. Our new new mice, some black, mostly whites. And so we're in good shape as far as mice are concerned. And then we have <clears throat> several bags of quail. That's what the quail looks like up close. But we have uh, a lot of quail now. The freezer is almost completely full of quail. These are our mixed, our mixed smaller rodents. Take what goes down there, and then down here in the bottom, this is uh, donated uh, pigeons and and jackrabbits and cottontails that Bell has caught. 
through the winter to help feed the injured wildlife. So, freezer's completely full. The freezer out in the rehab uh, triage building is also got a bunch of rabbits from Bell as well. So that's pretty much full. Okay, guys. <clears throat> that's what we've got going now. I appreciate it. Everything that you guys have done for us. Let's see if I can bring this thing around and just kind of do a little selfie thing here. But anyway, guys, thank you so very, very much for all of the donations. Uh, the gift certificates to, to our food supplier, Rodent Pro, really means a lot. We've stocked up our freezers. We should be good for another month, maybe even two, if we're really lucky. If Bell and I can catch a few more rabbits, it would really help. And uh, it's uh, getting a little cool. It's winter time out here. The farmers have got, uh, as you see, got their cattle brought in. Uh, and they're feeding across the street, so we get a lot of, a lot of livestock around here. I can't do a video without you saying hi to Cody. Hey, hey, Dum Dum. How's my boy? I know I haven't come played with you, have I? So I'll come play with you in just a minute. Guys, thank you so very much. You guys have a good, a good evening, and we'll talk to you soon. And a quick update on the Indianapolis Prize, of which Martin is one of 22 nominees. And they have posted information about him now on their Facebook page. So if you would like to go over and express your appreciation, we'll put the link down below.